All right. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Special edition of Rock Fantasy Files. Something I, I kind of put together. I might have copied from Pete because I do copy from Pete sometimes. He was doing some album comparisons uh, like Deep Purple and different like one-offs. I thought, why not try it with two newly put out albums, uh, long awaited. So I put together an episode dissecting two long awaited albums from two heavy metal legends tonight. First off, the 17th studio album by Iron Maiden, which I don't even know if I can pronounce correctly. So if someone else please pronounce it for me. Senjutsu. Senjutsu. I, I might have got it right, but I didn't want to start off with a big bumble. And the 16th studio album by Halloween, easy enough to self-titled Halloween album. I thought about grabbing a few friends and discussing a couple new albums around the round table or a campfire. If you guys are around campfire watching this with a cold one would be a fun idea for the channel. So pop one open and join us. The Iron Maiden album has the same recurring lineup as, as the last several with Bruce on vocals and the triple guitar attack of Dave Murray, Adrian Smith and Butch Jones favorite Yannick Gears. And uh, I, had, I put that in for Butch. I'm sure he's not watching. but uh, And of course, the mighty <laughs> Steve Harris on bass and, of course, Nico McBrain on drums. The Halloween album marked the return of the original member, Kai Hansen on guitars and vocals. The return of Michael Kisk uh, also on vocals. And this album, of course, features all three vocalists. As uh, Andy Devries is back, of course. And along with the triple guitar attack of Michael Weekath, I'm not pronouncing it correct. Sasha Gerstner and Kai Hansen. And of course, Marcus Groskovs on bass and Daniel Noble on the drums. I was lucky enough to catch the Pumpkins United tour, got a taste of what was to come. And, uh, you know, just to see what this was going on. So uh, we're going to just talk about what we like about these albums. And I think Nick said we should, he wanted to hop on with the Halloween album first. So we'll talk about the Halloween album first what we like about it is something we don't like about it uh and give it some kind of a rating between maybe like a one and ten and who would like to go first tonight in fact I, let me introduce all the guests we've got a bunch of guys from the sea of tranquility i i robbed pete's channel again and thank you pete for letting me do that so we got mr pardo of course we've got christopher mm. allo straight from an aew wrestling card i'm sure we've got ryan scow the king, one of the kings of the underground. We got Nick, who's a giant Halloween fan, and I, they're both great Iron Maiden fans. And of course, we got John Gaffney here from the Lair of the Alchemist, all the way from sunny Tampa, Florida. Right? It's it's pouring rain outside my window. Oh, it's right pouring, now, so. pouring <laughs> Tampa, Florida. But uh, it's sunny anything tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nighttime, so it shouldn't be too sunny. So, uh, Nick, why don't we kick it off with you? All right. So, yes, um, Halloween is one of my uh, bands that I, I love, probably. Um, I'd, well, you know, I got into them in, in eh, somewhat around like 93, a little bit later. Uh, but that's more due to my age and, you know, the, the times. So, yeah, what can we say? I, I don't think there's too many bands in, um, in existence for this long that had, first of all, three vocalists that all contributed top-notch material i think we can all agree i don't i they don't know too many halloween fans who, who reject the uh andy darris era which let's face it has been in existence since what about 90 94 they came yeah, out yeah 94 after yeah. the rings right so um yeah so i guess nobody would have thought that this was going to happen but tour when they when they did the pumpkins united tour and and made that song i think everybody I, I know they were themselves pleasantly surprised by the reception. Um, I just can't think of too many bands that that could come back like this and create an album. Because let's face it, the new Halloween album is it's one of the best albums released this year for my money. Yeah. Um, it, it's just I have the, uh, the special edition vinyl here because why not? Um, and, you know, I, I can't find a weak moment on it. I've looked, can't find one. Uh, look at the, the the artwork is it's this is stylistically not just you know that's a throwback to, to our, our favorite albums the keeper albums um, but to me what I hear on this is I hear a band that um, is not afraid to go back to its glory era uh, a lot of this sounds like a mixture of Walls of Jericho and the um, keeper albums to me definitely definitely and, yeah yeah and 
you know, I think, and we're obviously going to compare this to Iron Maiden and talk about both of them. But um, I feel like with Halloween that this is kind of like the way we felt when Brave New World came out. You know, when people return to a band you love, yeah. there was this buzz, right? There's this electricity around it. Um, you could be nervous, you know, how is this album going to sound, right? But Halloween boldly released the, the single uh, Skyfall first, which is like 130 minutes long. You know, it's like a yeah. 40 minute long song. The goddamn thing sizzles. It, it's, I just blasted it again before I listened to both albums today and uh you, you I mean that song is just a triumphant killer Halloween song it just reminds me of all the best of Halloween um it reminds and, me yeah it would almost you would almost think that that song would be the album closer on this because it reminds me so much of like the song Halloween or something it's just like one of those epic but it's not the closer there's a couple songs after it in fact the first I time thought I it was the it, closer you no, know, I follow the closer. It, the vinyl, it's it's in a different order. That's probably oh, that, okay. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. The, the fourth vinyl side here has down in the dumps, uh, golden times and save my high, which I believe is a um is that a bonus track bonus, then? Because yeah, I don't know. Bonus you know what? On yeah. Spotify, let me let me just check because yeah, I'm, it's it's the other way around on Spotify. I think I think Skyfall is the last song. No, it's I'm not. Saying, Gold, it's it's not? Skyfall, Golden Times, and Save My High. Now, uh, unless they're right. supposed to be bonus tracks, and uh, you know, down, the dumps, you... down the dumps is before Orbit, before Skyfall on Spotify's list. If down you look at is on side B at on the, yeah. on the vinyl. Down the dumps is a great song too, and it's. What, what a goofy name, but it's just, it's, it's Halloween. Well, that's the thing with Halloween. They, I've never seen a band. I don't like goofy, happy shit. I don't. I like crazy. miserable, depressing, crushing music in, with almost no exception. And they're one of the exceptions. And like mass pollution has a silly little thing going on. Um, yeah. You know, even in best time, like it's just so blindly optimistic, but I love it. Well, in spite almost... of myself. I'm like, da, 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 doing like a hundred down the highway. That best um, time is such a, a positive, happy song. It's almost hard to listen to in 2021. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know if I could possibly have the best time in my life in 2021 or 2020. It's going to be really hard to pull off. You, you got to do it. So, yeah. yeah. But, I, you know, you have it's a song like, they um, wrote about 2025. Yeah. Four more maybe, years. Maybe, not, maybe 2022. Let's be positive here. <laughs> Only you have a couple you have like an andy darris banger in cyanide which is a brief song that's like one of his like power songs yep. and you have angels i'm not crazy about angels but it is a nice kiski ballad um mm. which i wasn't always they've written some really nice kiski ballads that one probably is not as good as some of the other ones but i mean apart from that and it's still good um robot king is really strong ah. You know, and and the opener out for the glory, the guitar beat, uh, you know, yeah. the guitar back and forth in that, the vocals. I really think they 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 just knocked it out of the goddamn park with this, and and they did so in a different way than Iron Maiden did because Iron Maiden doesn't, it, like, they're not going to go back and make you know, Aces High or or Innocent Exile again. It's just not the way they write music. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think at this point in the game, we, we probably if you don't realize that now, you know, you, that's the people that have got off the Iron Maiden train, right? Um, Maiden still, they create, they go in their progressive direction and, they, and they've expanded on that. And, and Halloween instead, you know, I think Halloween has, again, we have such a long era with Darius, but I think with this, they, they, they really plucked the, the best out of the, out of their first three albums. Um, and there was one more point I wanted to make and it just, just slipped out of my brain. You actually interviewed uh, Halloween for this album on one of your channels, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Michael Wyckoff. Uh, and that was mind-blowing for me because, I mean, Jesus, I sure. worshipped this guy since uh, I got into them. And, um, the, you know, and of course, my Wi-Fi was messed up. So he wound up calling the backup number because we couldn't connect. Mm -hmm. And the backup number was my phone. So my phone rang with a number from Germany. I was like, hello? And he's like, hello, it's Michael from Halloween. I'm like, oh, you know, like, I <laughs> fell off my chair. I'm like, oh, okay, buddy, how you doing? You know, and he's just totally cool. But there was a goddamn point I wanted to make. I've got the olds and I can't, 
See, it's spreading. Oh, you know what? Uh, you're easy, you can easily interrupt any of us. Just raise your hand and. Uh, if no. it comes yeah, but uh, yeah, I think so. I love it. I mean, I I love this album. Uh, they they really knocked it out of the park. They just, I can't wait for them to tour it. It's gonna be. It's gonna oh, be great. Yeah. yeah. I'm fucking going with you this time. You're uh, gonna if wait I, a minute. You're gonna go even if it's a new, my, even if it's a New York City. Yeah. Yeah. Just tie like a rope around my ankles and drag me into the house. Yeah, think of the lack of ego that it would take for them to to make room for each other on this. You know, I don't know that many bands could could pull that off. And they, and they're used no. to doing it because before the pandemic, how long was that Pumpkins United tour? Almost like two years, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was. You know, I don't. I can't. I don't know. Could you picture? I mean, who are the other major bands that have gone through three vocals? Really, you know, Priest, Maiden. Man. No, not Priest. Yeah, Priest just had the two, not right? Priest, yeah, but no, Sabbath. Not, Sabbath. I always get yeah Sabbath. I mean, obviously, you can't. Sabbath, <laughs> was, uh, Sabbath you could yeah, have but, five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like I, I can't. Like Paul, well, you know, a, a similar yeah, example. It's an amazing feat that for this to be because that happened. I know where Pete's going. Yeah, a similar example of this in also in recent times, right around the same time, is what Michael Schenker has been doing. What Michael Schenker, yeah. So you know, he brought along you know four Gary Gordon and Graham Bonnet. Yeah, exactly, four singers. Uh, oh, wow. I will say, you know, seeing both shows, both amazing, mm. but the singers in Halloween are in much better vocal, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, shape. I would say yeah. they're probably and, a lot younger. You know, I would think some of the, yeah, they're a lot, they are definitely a lot younger, which has a lot to do with it. But yeah, another very similar type thing, and it works. I mean, yeah. both tours have sold great uh, yeah. when they come around here. So there is some, you know, how many other bands are going to start following along in these footsteps and say, hey, there's money in this and bringing back all our original singers and doing this oh, kind of big tour. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If they're all alive and you can pull it off, it's an amazing yeah. stunt, yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, the guys in Halloween are no spring chickens to be sound as good either. Though. True. True. Yeah. They, they've taken good care of themselves, I think, uh, the singers have. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they're probably at the same age now that, Maiden was when I made Brave New World. If you think about it, probably right. Probably, think, I have to look at twenty up. years younger than Maiden. No, no, they're probably nah. only like. No, I mean they both. I mean they're both. Actually, no, in the eighties, you know. So. Yeah. No, I think I think Whitey's thought... like fifty-seven. Yeah. Anyhow, what what kind of number do you want to throw on this thing? If you're going to give it a number, Mister Franco. At a ten, yeah. I, I would be comfortable giving this a nine or a nine point five. Okay. That's I would yeah, I think it's probably a 9.5. We'll go with that. Cool. Yeah. So we're gonna wrap, we're gonna end up your segment of Halloween here, and we will come back and you can add anything else a little bit later, and we'll come back and get your Iron Maiden perspective. And uh as I go through my screen, the next person in line, I guess I can go Mr. Gaffney. Welcome to the show, John. I'm glad you can make it tonight. Thank you. Uh I'm gonna I'm gonna play the contrarian uh, to you, Nick. Uh, here, sure. that's what makes it good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean I like Halloween. Honestly, I'm I'm only most familiar with those those first three albums, The Keepers and Wall of Jericho. My wife is actually a huge Halloween fan, and uh, so I've heard all this stuff, you know, in her car and in passing. And it's not you know not that that I don't enjoy it, but I've most into the uh, the early stuff. In fact, I think she went to, to see the Pumpkins United in New York. She flew to New York and okay. met some friends. Is that that's how much she's into it? So I've seen them live like numerous times because whenever they come around, we would go and uh, we would go and see them. Uh, I mean, I did like the album. I, I I applaud them for, as everybody has mentioned here, this bringing in the singers and making it work. How many bands could really make something like that uh, work? You know, not many, but I, I think it, it's, it's cool that they did that. It's got a lot of the things that one would love about Halloween on this. It's got the big choruses that just sort of lift wow. and, you know, explode out of the songs, the soaring vocals great musicianship you know the guitar playing is fantastic i always thought that marcus is an underrated bass player he's got a great tone and adds a lot of really cool things yep. uh actually one of my favorite songs on this was angels <laughs> i know nikki said that wasn't one of your favorites angels and skyfall for me were the ones mm -hmm. that i really liked 
my problem that I had with it is, and, and this is really, I think, just me because I'm not a huge power metal fan. Okay. I'm like kind of a middle of the road power metal fan. And I get a, a, that sort of power metal drum beat that, you know, that power metal tempo and drum beat starts to wear on me after a while. And there's a little bit too much of that on this record. Too many of the songs are like roughly in the same tempo and everything. And I think that's why I liked Angels because it has some spots in the song where it sort of drops down and it changes and everything. And Skyfall is kind of a long song with a lot of different uh, changes to it. So I kind of wish that there was a little bit more variety in some of the songs, but I know that's kind of a Halloween trademark, these sort of fast, you know, power metal type type riffs and everything uh you know so for me I I, I like the courses the songs were catchy uh but I'm just not a fan of this kind of sound where it's it's a little too repetitive for me I wish there was some more variety I know we're going to talk about Iron Maiden that's what I like about Iron Maiden is is that there's a lot of variety between the songs there's a lot of different things going on uh so for me, that that left me a little bit and in the album feels a little too long to me also. You know, I think if it was a tad bit shorter, I, I don't I was listening to it on Spotify. So it had the bonus tracks on it that made it even longer, you know. But uh, I think if you're a Halloween fan, anybody who's a Halloween fan is going to like this because it's got all the things that everybody would lo loves about Halloween, the soaring vocals, the big choruses, the great playing and everything. Just for me personally, I wish there was a little bit more variety. It, it does really feel like they're trying to sound like the first three or four records or whatever. I, I maybe wish that they had tried to do something a little bit different, but you know, I don't know. This is what I know a lot of people really love about them. And, and I mean, I love that era too, the keeper, Keepers and Wall of Jericho era. So, so I get it. Uh, Liked it, probably if I had to give it a number, me as a middle of the road power metal fan, I'm going to have to give it like a seven, a 7.5, okay. but right. I can understand Halloween fans, this, I can understand Halloween fans really enjoying this because I think it's, it's, it's all the things that uh, Halloween fans love about the band. You know, John, the, the last Halloween album that I loved the whole album, the last one that I loved the whole album was The Dark Ride in, in uh, 2000 so i've only loved smatterings of their songs in all of those yeah. albums since then i've never this is the first time i've loved a whole halloween album so just just something i just thought of you know so i, I didn't mind that it was long, but. i admit that the, the songs like big choruses in every song very hooky you know, again, that's sort of these choruses that just explode and the vocals just start soaring way up high. You know, you just kind of want to put power metal, put your fist in the air and sing along. I could totally picture a lot of these songs, you know, working really well live. It's yeah. just for me after, man, and I even I sat down at one point and I jumped from one song to another and the tempos are just too similar for me. You know, I just wish there was a little bit more variety with between the songs and even within some of the songs, just that whole like power metal uh, double bass drum beat after a while, it just sort of, it just sort of wears me down. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks John for that review. And uh, if you, I'm going to move over to Pete Pardo next, if you'd like, and uh, don't you have anything more to add, John? On that. No. <laughs> we'll be back for you on round two for the mate uh, the mighty up the irons iron made <laughs> pete welcome to the show thanks for your time tonight thanks for having me steve yeah i mean uh i i like this album quite a bit i i've been following halloween since the very beginning we kind of told told the story on uh hudson valley squares last night was that last night yeah last night uh, about how you know that first Halloween EP and Walls of Jericho yes. and even the Keepers albums I bought from you in Rock Fantasy back when mm -hmm. I was uh, going to college and sure. so you know I, I've got I've got a lot of history with them I kind of you know after after the Keepers albums I kind of like fell out of favor with Halloween for a couple of years you know those, saw, those two know. albums with yeah. Kiski after that you know in hindsight aren't that bad but at the time I didn't like them at all and then I, you know, I Masters of the Ring and a couple others I got, but I was kind of sporadic with them. But I've re gotten into them like in a big way over the last like decade or so. And I think the Andy Darris years are excellent. And I think very underrated. And you have to wonder, 
you know, how many old school Halloween fans stopped following this group in the 90s and beyond and really don't know the newer the newer albums much and you know they love walls of jericho they love the ep they love the keepers albums but they don't really know the new stuff uh and you know and but i think that they're liking this album because maybe this is like a reintroduction to the andy derrish years and reminding them of what they love so much about the early early stuff so i think for me the the band tried really hard you saw it when we we saw them play uh in new york city a couple years ago you saw them kind of throw all of these songs. They've got this whole gigantic stew pot of material that they, I mean, it was like what a three hour show. So they threw everything at you. And, you know, for us old school fans, we got all the great old stuff for the newer fans. You got a lot of the new stuff, but you had these guys singing together, playing together. And it was really well, well done. And I think, you know, this album for me, it's a long one. Don't get me wrong, but there's, you know, Alpha Glory is a killer opener fear the fallen and best time those three songs oh. starting off just really just grab you right from the throat and there's a lot of really good stuff in between you know nick mentioned a lot of you know robot king is great cyanide uh skyfall is terrific because i, I love the big epic oh yeah style, you know that video is great really too. That video. it's amazing um you know kiski sounds great it's great to hear him back to doing power metal again because he's done lots of like melodic rock and more hard rock type of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Andy sounds great. I think my only real want from this album is I would have liked to have hear Kai sing more lead vocals. I think he doesn't get enough mm-hmm. time in the spotlight like the other two guys. You know, you know, it's not a big deal, but that's what I would have liked a little more. But man, the guitar playing is off the charts. Um, I get what John is saying about the kind of sameness of some of it, but that's, I think, more indicative of this style of metal than just Halloween, because yeah. I mean, Halloween had been around, you know, they're one of the godfathers of this whole thing. So I always give them a pass for that. But there's a lot of other bands, other power metal bands that I will complain about that left and right, because that kind of drives me crazy when, you know, half the album or three quarters of the album kind of all sounds the same, same rhythms, you know, that kind of whole Heidi, Heidi Ho <laughs> type of thing, which, you know, that real happy power metal stuff generally speaking really bugs me i don't mind it when these guys do it so much because i think these guys invented that so but i don't know i think it's a really fun album it's it's immediate from the first listen second listen you're already remembering all these melodies all these riffs and all these things so musicianship wise vocal wise melody wise i like it if i had to give it a rating it's probably for me a good eight and a half out of ten which i think is pretty damn good could be a nine uh, is it the best Halloween album ever? No. But is it like a top 25% of their whole catalog? I think no. so. And I think that uh, we, uh, my guess is they will do a follow-up and the follow-up will be even better than this. Cool. Because I think now they've had the time on the road together. They've done the album. I think the next time around, if they do another one, will be even better than this. And this is really damn good. And yeah. they may, who knows, these guys are probably writing songs or they've been sitting home for 18, 19 months. Yeah, like we may see another yeah. one before you know it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Cool, Pete. Uh, thanks for your input. I'm going to move over to my bottom center square, the Mr., the might, as they say in Europe, the mighty Chris Allo. Well, thanks, Steve. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on the show with this esteemed panel. Um, I probably have the least amount of experience with uh, with Halloween, so I'll, I will have a, I'm sure, a different take than everybody else. I, I love the early stuff. Uh, I saw Halloween in 87 and thought they were awesome. Uh, the last Halloween record I bought was uh, Keeper of the Seven Keys Part 2, which yeah. I didn't really like. I All saw right. them again in 89, and I thought they were not nearly as good in 89 as they were in 87, and I was done. Uh, so I have not I've gotten a bunch of promos over the years, like Nick mentioned the the Dark Ride. I know Nuclear Blast has sent me a bunch of CDs over the years, and I kind of half-heartedly listen to them. They asked me a bunch of times to interview Halloween. I always turned them down. I saw them a bunch of times in Europe at festivals, and you know, I would watch like half the set, and they were always good, but just a band I haven't really, for 30-something years, haven't really paid much attention to. Steve for a while has been talking about this new record, you know, and I just, um, again, it's a band for three plus decades. I haven't paid attention to, I do remember Steve asking, he's like, aren't you going to go the pumpkins United? I'm like, nah, nah, I'm, 
I'm skipping that. I went to Michael Shanker Fest twice, but what? I skipped the I skipped the Halloween thing because I'm like, well, I don't know any of these songs other than the really old stuff. Yeah. But long story short, uh, I only had a chance to listen to the new record twice, but I was pleasantly surprised. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well done. Uh, without having heard a, a Halloween record in thirty something years, I was like, well. This kind of sounds like uh, Halloween should sound, you know, I don't listen. I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you the three different vocalists on here. I mean, I could hear the different voices, but I don't know who's who it does. And you know what? It doesn't matter to me. I mean, it was good. The songs were good. The production was good, you know, and I thought the record started out really good, but then like towards the middle, like the songs I really liked, like were like indestructible and robot King. And I'm like, holy shit, this is really pretty good. And the, the version I heard ended with Skyfall, yeah. which I hadn't heard before, uh, you know, until yesterday. And I'm like, wow, yeah, this is this is really pretty good. So overall, um, I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was um, really good. And I, it makes me want to check out some of the stuff I, I may have missed in the last uh, 30 something years, except for Pink Bubbles Go Ape, because that's a really shitty name for a record. I don't care how good it is. I'm probably never going to hear it. But um, yeah, uh, if I had to come up with a number, uh, I'm going to give it like an eight and a half because I thought it was really strong. Again, it's only two listens, but off the two listens, I I really enjoyed it. That's what I wanted to say before real quick. Um, Charlie Bauerfine, if that's how you say his name, produced the album. That guy is a fantastic, fantastic producer. The production is amazing. Yeah, it's really good. It's really freaking good. It does. And cool, I think you cool. know, Chris Chris makes a good point. He says it even though you haven't listened to Halloween in a long, long time, it sounds like a Halloween album. Yeah. You should say. Yeah. Absolutely. It's it's like, wow, okay, yeah, I remember it. I'm like, yeah, this is this is good. This is really good. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So the last guy over here before I give my two cents on the mighty Halloween is um is the legendary Ryan Scow. Legendary, thanks, Steve. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll tell you what, uh, I'm kind of in the middle of the road here with a lot of this stuff because I do like power metal, but I'm very picky with power metal. I think I kind of closer to John in that respect. Uh, cool. I love the old EP. I love uh, Walls of Jericho. I love the Keeper albums. Uh, after that, I'm, I'm in, kind of in the same boat as some of you guys. Like I kind of followed them sporadically, like Bitter Than Raw. I remember Time of the Oath, uh, Dark Ride. I think that you know, was the other one. Uh, Gamble with the Devil. I don't own any of those albums. I just listen to them a bunch. But this is pretty good. But it just never compelled me to go out and listen to them. Uh, I should have gone to see the Pumpkins United tour with some of you guys. But I don't know. Now that COVID happened, I have a little more appreciation for not missing live shows. The next time, <laughs> we're probably out of show, though, I think, that night somewhere else in your defense. Yeah, but, you know, when they come back around, I'll definitely be at the show. But uh, I don't know. A couple people, like, you know, they'll, you hear the new Halloween. You know, I, I like the old stuff. And especially with German power metal, like Nick said, uh, I don't really like happy metal. I don't know. It's just kind of a, it's a weird thing for me, but they're he one does. of the few bands that are very like, happy. What's up? He, okay. doesn't, he doesn't like Sabaton, guys. I know. I hate Sabaton. Uh, you're only, I don't want, I don't want to derail that. Neither do, oh. I. <laughs> Neither do I. Neither do I. <laughs> happy pa- uh, war metal. That's what I'm, I'm not going to invite happy you guys from the Sabaton album when it comes out. <laughs> find some other I'm guys. Skip that one, Steve. Don't worry about that. No, no but I, 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 uh, yeah, they're uh, for a ha- they're happy. I mean, it's a happy band, uh, and it's great. I mean, they they pull it off. It doesn't sound cheesy. It doesn't sound corny. Where a lot of power metal bands go down that route, and they just kind of like eh, loses me. I totally get what John's saying about the tempo being kind of like monotonous. And like Pete says, sometimes there are some bands where it's like, uh, I don't know, like there's a couple instances in my life where I heard the band Dragon Force and it just, I, I it's, it's like, like someone fucking needling your head. Like, just, okay, like I can't, I can't do it. But uh, Halloween does it. And I, I don't know. It doesn't really bother me. Like you said, maybe it's because they're the godfathers of the style. Like one of the first bands to invent power metal. So since they yeah. invented it, they can kind of do whatever the fuck they want. Okay. Uh, but you know, so uh, a couple of people actually, you know, said to me, I'm much like some of you, uh, you got to check this album out. And uh, finally, I'm like, all right, all right. So I didn't listen to anything on YouTube, then check it out. I just went to Rock Fantasy. Thank you. And I, I yeah, just, uh, yeah, I bought a copy a couple months ago, throw it on in the car. And I'm like, 
I, you know, I'm about 30 minutes, 35 minutes from that store. So I got a little, almost a third of the way through the album by the time I got home. And I'm like, this is really fucking good. The first four yeah. songs, you know, out, out for glory, if you're the fallen, best time, mass pollution, threw it on in the stereo when I got home. And yeah, the whole, like Chris said, the middle of the album, indestructible, robot king, cyanide, the closer skyfall. It's fantastic. So a lot of those 90s albums, a lot of that other stuff with that, Andy, I'm only loosely familiar with. I always liked it, but you know the deal. There's so many bands in the world. You can't stay on top of everything. You, know, you can't be Absolutely. a band with 800, you know, I was at 16 albums, you said, 17 albums. You know, uh, when it comes to other German bands like Gravedigger, Battery album, Lovery album, no problem. But Halloween, I just didn't really stay on top of them mm-hmm. to the same degree. But uh, this one I like a lot. And like you said, if they come out with another one with the same lineup, same triple vocalist, uh, I'm sure it's going to be awesome. I'm definitely going to pick it up. Just because the way that they, they don't all sound the same. So the vocalists, kind of the way they play off each other, uh, it's great. There's a lot of interchange. You know, you can definitely tell the different singers. I'm not as intimately familiar as some of you other guys, but uh, you can, it, it's just like the way they, you know, the way they wrote the songs to kind of like bounce off each other. It's very effective. It's very good use of vocal harmonies. It really works in that regard. The vocals are really fantastic. The production's great. The guitar playing's phenomenal. Uh, really, really good leads and riffs. So yeah, I would say, I'd give it an eight out of 10. I'd say it's a solid eight out of 10 album. And I, I'm picky with power metal. Like the stuff I like, I really like, yeah. but there's a lot of it that comes out every year. And I just, I, I check out a little on YouTube and I'm like, eh, that's not worth 10 or 15 bucks. Like it's not bad for what it is, but it's just not my thing. But yeah, this was a uh, money well spent. Really good album. Thank you. Thank you. And I guess my, my take on it, uh, this Halloween LP to me could possibly be my top album of the year that's how much i like it might have wow. bumped might have bumped off something else that from earlier in the year i listened to a ton but uh, of course we'll talk about that in the year end episodes but i absolutely love like er, er, echoing everybody else this competing dueling vocals of these great vocalists and i agree with pete because i really love kai because i love the first two albums with him and it was a treat seeing pumpkins united with him coming out and actually performing those songs and like that gritty nasty voice but it's great how it does play along and they could have probably used them a little bit more and that triple guitar attack which is a you know just there and just blazes together it seems like they're all battling with each other on the vocals and the guitars and the production that out for glory doesn't disappoint kicks off this amazing album it could have been easily on any of those key, on either one of those keeper the seven keys albums that just reminds me so much of the keepers type song Fear of the fall, and I can't get out of my head. I'll sleep at night. I might hear that in my head. It's like mm-hmm. the fear of the fallen, and, and it's just it's just, it's just raging on and tearing apart. And uh, that amazingly positive best time, like I just I was saying earlier, it's really hard for me to get in with that and thinking I'm having the best time of my life. But it's really nice to try to try to in 2021 and everything with all this shit going on to try to have something po- that positive thrown at you. And Indestructible is also a great song. I call that Mass Pollution. It's like a metal rager. It's got some crazy, it's all this heavy and metal and that, and it's so good in the epic Skyfall. And the only thing I can add is I really wish that Pumpkins United was included on this album because I would have liked to have had that not just as a single, but with such a strong song and a statement of getting them all together. And Nick, you said you knew something about the reason that wasn't on, or do you remember... I scanned through my interview uh, and I know I, he, we didn't okay. address that, but I think they just had so much material. That's you know, they, they just yeah, so because it would have been even, even longer. Yeah. I, like, I, maybe because I'm just listening to like Spotify, the bonus tracks or the vinyl I've been listening to as the bonus. Now uh, is golden times and save my hide. Not on the original, not on your CD, Ryan. No, it's not. They're not. So those are bonus, bonus tracks. Those two. Okay. Save my hide. And down in the dumps is on there, though, right? Down in the dumps is a good song for 2021. Yeah. We're down in the dumps a lot. <laughs> but uh, here we're going to move we're on. Nick, we're back to you for your Iron Maiden uh, analyzation of All the right. new album from Iron Maiden. Well, I hate this, say, Nick, so I'm sure this will be quick. What's that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I hate keep it for about three minutes, all right? Yeah. Oh, I need that, like, in the when the politicians do the... Um, the stupid debates and that the person's like 30 seconds <laughs> all right, i'll do that for you I, 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 right now if the cameras are going on mask up all right mask up 
<laughs> um, yeah, and let me let me say too that I'm really not a big wide ranging power metal guy either. Uh, I'm very picky, you know. I mean, Iced Earth, uh, Blind Guardian, up to pretty much a night at the opera, and then I kind of, I mean, I've made myself go back and listen to some of the newer stuff, and it's good. But I'm not a big power metal guy, either, so the, these Maiden and Halloween are kind of like my, you know, little exceptions. So here we go, some jutsu. A um, lot of lot of mixed feelings on this, huh? Like <laughs> a lot of people. Uh, Oh, with the same complaints, not liking it. The songs are too long. It's not fast, blah, blah, blah. I disagree. <laughs> um, and, you know, I'm not an automatic, I'm going to love whatever Iron Maiden puts out, because as we've talked about on the channel, I do not like the final frontier. Uh, for all the reasons that people don't like Sujutsu and Book of Souls, I, it, just, I, it just doesn't do anything for me. So it is possible for me to be objective about my favorite band of the world, Iron Maiden. But Senjutsu, uh, to me, is, is excellent. And it's getting better with each listen. It's a little more of a grower than Halloween, which is more immediate. Um, but these songs really get under your skin. Uh, my favorite songs on it are coming out to be Stratego. Um, I love Lost in the Lost World. That's the one that I go to sleep saying to myself. Wow. Um, I think they, they and I think I love the beginning of it, just the whole way. It, it's just excellent. Um, the boy, you know, Days of Future Past is probably the most reminiscent of the songs that people seem to be longing for, like the faster, more aggressive ones. Uh, you know, the time machine is I, I wasn't crazy about, it, but it's growing on me a lot. Um, but Darkest Hour, I Iron Maiden can write a war epic. My favorite post um post classic era maiden album is is and remains a uh, matter of life and death for part of partly because of the themes, but also the execution. I think Darkest Hour harkens to that, could have been on it. Um, Death of the Celts, I didn't really like at first. I listened to it more and it's growing on me. I think The Parchment is excellent and I think Hell on Earth is maybe the best song on the album. Really? Uh, yeah, for me. Um, and you know, that might change next year. But <laughs> I, 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 I said before how Maiden doesn't, you know, they're not going to give you um, invaders anymore you know for whatever reason they're not they're not they haven't written that type of music what, what's the last super fast song they wrote be quick or be dead probably the last super yeah. fast song they wrote a long time yeah yeah they're just and you know i've come to terms with that steve likes his you know progress like his little beginnings and building up and everything i'm okay with that i think they do a great job with it and i think it's a really good iron maiden album. um it, comparing errors is hard uh you know, the, my, my favorite, and I'm unusual, my favorite tri, uh, triumvirate of Maiden albums, the, the, the three out Maiden albums together that I love the most are Power Slave, Summer of Time, and Seventh Son. And that right there could get my ass fucking, you know, whatever. I love, of course I love the old stuff. I, I love it beyond belief. But I'm okay with that. When they got, you know, proggy, they got more expansive. I, I, it's, it's what moved me the most when I was a little kid and I heard this stuff and it changed my life. Um, so where am I going with that? Oh, so I would say Sinjutsu, I, I think Brave New World and A Matter of Life and Death are better, but I think Sinjutsu is better than Book of Souls. Oh, blows the goddamn doors off of the final frontier, which should, they should have just skipped over that. Um, and better than Dance of Death, uh, although Passion Dale is beyond one of the greatest songs I've ever written. Mm. Um, so you know, you got to look at it in the perspective of, of, of all the other rest of the albums, but. I would probably give this, probably give it an 8.5, 8 or an 8.5, right. depending on the day. Um, <clears throat> it, it's, it, I think it's magnificent. Um, I'm okay with Kevin Shirley. I'm not thrilled with him as a producer, but I, I guess I'm used to it by now. That The boys aren't changing. That's that's who Steve wants. Well, Nick, that's what they're used how, to much, uh, how much input do you think Kevin's really got, or is it really the Steve Harris show? Yeah, I, so I agree with Steve you. Harris. And if you, if you want proof of that, listen to that Adrian uh, Smith. Uh, Cotton? The, Cotton the, the, album. Yeah. Wasn't Kevin Shirley involved in that? And that yeah. doesn't sound like the Iron Maiden records. So that makes me think that it's there really it's go, Steve Harris. Is, uh, yeah. You know. you know, I heard, I don't know, I'm not a musician and I don't, you know, pretend to know like all these things, but I was listening to somebody else talk about this album. Uh, the singer of the band Primordial, Alan Averill from Dublin, he's got a, a podcast 
and he was talking about, um, and he's obviously a musician for his whole life, and he was saying that Maiden does a very spontaneous studio recording where they just kind of play and they don't do a lot to it, to the music. I know there's little synth parts mixed in, but he was he was saying that he wished they really did kind of like tinker around with it a little. I can't explain it like he did, but it was an interesting perspective because I thought, oh, they just plug in and play. Um, the other thing I like about uh, Sinjutsu compared with Book of Souls maybe a little bit is, I mean, but I don't think Bruce can hit his high register the way he used to. So when he goes through, when he sings a, a couple of verses way up there, it can get a little like, okay, I feel like he's straining a little bit on this album. I think they, they supported him a little more. I don't, again, I don't know if it's backing tracks, uh, backing vocal tracks or whatever, or if it's just Adrian, I know I hear Adrian on time machine. I think I, I love his voice. Cause he's got like that deeper voice to Bruce. So whatever they're doing with that, to me, it really worked. It adds a lot of power and, and dynamic to Bruce's voice. Um, but I, I think they, I think they did a great job again. Uh, people bitch about this album already. That's fine. You know, whatever your personal taste is. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, if you love Iron Maiden, I don't know why you don't love a long Iron Maiden song. It's just that's me. But I'm weird. Yeah. Well, just, but, uh, just to add to what Nick said uh, about uh, what uh, Alan from Primordial said, yeah, I just read an interview with, I believe it was Adrian Smith for uh, a magazine I used to write for uh, Roadie Crew, and he said that exactly. He's like, yeah, you know, in the old days when we were working on the old Maiden albums, he's like, we would go over everything with a fine tooth comb over and over and over. And right. he's like, specifically on the new record, he's like, yep. We just met up in the studio. We just did it, recorded it, and wrote everything. We were done in like no time because they've been sitting on this record forever. So yeah, that, yeah. that is absolutely, whether you like it or not, a huge difference between new Iron Maiden and old Iron Maiden. They absolutely put in more time into the old material and this new material, uh, they are not. Right. But, you know, I think it still yeah. gives me that feeling. You know what I mean? Like, and may, it, I could be biased. I mean, they're my favorite band on earth. You know, um, but yeah, I, I, I think they, I think there's still, there's still life in that old beast. You know what I mean? For sure. Uh, so we're going to wrap your portion up, Nick. And what number did you give it again? Oh, you already gave yeah. the number, didn't you? All right, let's make it sure. Yeah, you got to stop me because once this kicks in, I'm like, <laughs> all right, well, <laughs> you're going to hang out for the after party. <laughs> we have one. All right, cool. So Nick, Great, you're giving it a high rating. So, Maiden fans unite with Nick Franco. He's gonna, <laughs> and now we're moving back over, keeping the same order. Mr. Gaffney, let's see what your two cents are. On. Uh, usually, when it comes to Iron Maiden albums from this era of the band, I refer to it as the Rob era, the return of Bruce era. It usually takes me a bunch of listens to really because there's yeah. they're usually they're long, there's a lot of stuff going on, and it takes me a while to get into it. When I got this album, it grabbed me right from the first listen. Wow. And uh, yeah, it, it, it really did. In fact, I, I did a video on it on my channel and I was planning on listening to it a bunch of times and then making the video. Went out for a long walk, listened to the whole thing, came in and did a video because I wanted it to be like what I called my Christmas morning review. You just opened up the wrapping paper. You're like, <clears throat> this, is, this is great. Uh, I think for me, this is what Iron Maiden has been moving towards for a while now. These long, these long songs, these more, we'll call them progressive, even though I don't really agree that this is always progressive. To me, they're just long songs a lot of times. But to, to me, it works on this record. And I know that that's a complaint that a lot of people have of Iron Maiden during this Rob era of the band, that the songs are too long. <clears throat> but for me, they, they work. It's like it just sort of clicks. And an example of that for me, is Death of the Celts. And on my channel, I did a review of the Book of Souls album. And I mentioned how the song, The Red and the Black was too ridiculously long and it had too many guitar solos that didn't go anywhere. Well, the Iron Maiden fans came at me with their pitchforks and torches, <laughs> and, you know, but here was my point that Death of the Celts, it's a long song, but it's got enough changes in it. There's a guitar solo, then the band comes back in playing a melody together, then another guitar solo, it just isn't continuous guitar solos. 
there's enough variety between these songs. You got Strategio, which is classic Iron Maiden galloping. You've got sort of the moody intro, Senjutsu, the title track. Writing on the Wall, which threw me and a lot of other people for a loop at the beginning with its sort of Southern rockish main riff. Uh, but it grew on me. And when it's sequenced within the album, it really makes sense and it works. Uh, Darkest Hour is one of my favorite songs on here. I love when Bruce is in this zone, this sort of power ballad-ish, dark ballad uh, type of thing. I just think Bruce excels at that. And Bruce's vocals, I noticed some people had some complaints about his vocals, but to me, I actually like the fact that he's spending more time in the middle part of his range rather than being in the upper part all the time. To me, he's got this sort of now mature, sort of smoky, baritone voice thing going on in a lot of songs. And when he goes up into the air raid siren range, it lifts the songs up because he's not up there all the time now, you know? So I actually dug the fact that he spent a little more time in the lower part of his range. I know the other complaint with, with some of this stuff, we already mentioned his name, Kevin Shirley. Uh, the mix for me, you know, I'm not going to say that this is the be best sounding album I've ever heard, but I do like the fact that it seemed like on this record, what they did was is they, a lot of times there's, it sounds like there's only two guitars. The rhythm guitars are in the left and right speaker. This has been an issue in the past when you got three guitars, where do you put that third guitar? Classic era, it was always left and right for the two guitars. And then for some of the other albums, the third guitar would float in the middle. Sounded like here it, it was one, the guitars are in the left and right, which left the middle to the bass and the drums and the keyboards, which was another thing that I liked. I thought that the keyboards added an extra dimension. And when that third extra little harmony guitar would come in or something, it added some variety and some things that kept you engaged when you were listening to the record. So for me, it's just a great record. I, I'll be honest, I was scared when I saw that there was about 30 minutes of Steve Harris solely written songs at the end of the record before I heard them. Because in my opinion, the albums before this, Bruce and Adrian have become the strongest songwriters in Iron Maiden. But when I heard the last three songs on this record, it felt like, yeah, uh, Steve is back here. He's got some of his magic touch back. Love the death of the Celts. Love the way it flowed into the parchment with that sort of ominous, repetitive rhythm. And Hell on Earth is a great way to take out the album. So I was just really pleased with it. I've grown to like it even more as I listen to it. I do understand people's uh, possible complaints about the song length and the production, but it works for me. I'm giving it a nine out of 10. Wow. Very good. Boy, he's hitting the home run here. Maiden's hitting the home <laughs> run with the, with the graphic. Great points, John. All right. Thank you. And let's move down to Mr. Pardo again. Welcome back. Yeah. Um, I like this album for the first time I heard it. And, you know, I think I'm the Maiden fan who fully realizes where they're at, where they have been. And I, I kind of gave up a long time ago waiting for the second coming of Power Slave and Number the Beast. I mean, that's that, that was then, this is now. And I don't have any issue with the longer songs, with the, the way they structure the songs. And, and I agree with John, this is not progressive metal. This isn't, this isn't progressive. This is just made in putting together epic length tracks that have a lot more intricacies and allow them to stretch out a little bit, but this isn't, this isn't a prog album. They don't put out prog albums. I know a lot of people like to throw that out there, but, yeah. uh, and Thank you, yeah. I mean, the first three tracks on the album are instant grabbers. I mean, Senjutsu, the title track. I love Nico's little drum fills in that. It's a good, heavy song. Stratego for me is the one throwback song on the album. You know, it's kind of, it's not that long and it's just got the, the, the galloping drums and it's catchy, great guitars. I got to say the writing on the wall is so catchy. I know we all were kind of like when they first released that, we were all like, what is this? It's kind of very straightforward <laughs> and atmospheric and jangly guitars and all that kind of stuff. But man, it's such a good song and it sticks with you. And John said it perfectly. It's, it's in the right spot in the sequence of this album. Uh, Lost in a Lost World, great song. Days of Future Past, The Time Machine, The Darkest Hour is killer. You know, in my original review that I put on my uh, on my channel, 
an F, and it's interesting what John said that how he went out and listened to it once and kind of it, it impacted him immediately that he wanted to go right in and talk about it. I waited for four listens to do that. And I got criticized for not giving it more time by so many people. But I felt like after four listens that I had a really good handle on it and I could talk yeah. about it. One of the things I, I talked about is that, you know, there are like four tracks, 10 minutes plus on the album mm -hmm. and maybe a couple of them, the long, you know, opening interlude, you know, you got the bass and, the, and, it, and they do that a lot. That's what they do now. Uh, a couple of the tracks, there are these long, you know, musical passages with lots of weaving guitar solos. I will say there's some great guitar solos on this album from all three yeah. guys, but you know, maybe you shave a minute or two off of one track or another, and you cut like four or five minutes off the album would make a lot of people happy. And I said that in my original uh, review, I'm thinking now, as I've had a couple of weeks with this album, that I don't know if I change really much of anything. I think the songs are the length they need to be. Uh, Hell on Earth is fantastic. I love Death of the Celts. I think that's got some nice moodiness to it, which really, really works and some really good riffing. So I don't know. For me, this is a solid eight or an eight and a half out of 10. I enjoy it a lot. I like it just like I like all the recent, you know, Rob albums, so to speak, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just, this is what Maiden is. I think when, you know, when Maiden is all done, right? And then like a decade has passed after they have, kind of given their final gasp. We're going to look back on their career. We're going to see, all right, we got the Deano years. We got those 80s albums. We got the 90s, which was a lot of transition going on. And we got the Rob albums. And the Rob albums, for the most part, all have a similar feel. You know, you could arguably say that Brave New World is the greatest out of all those albums. But I think we've had a lot of really fantastic material on all of them. Uh, but you know what, if there's a lot of people that aren't into the long kind of more yeah. moody kind of songs, and I get it. Uh, I've come to peace with that a long time ago. I, I know that they're not going to make an album like, you know, Killers, Number of the Beast, or even Seventh Son of a Seventh Son again. Although there are a couple tracks and some, there are some passages on this album that remind me of Seventh Son of a Seventh Son mm -hmm. and Somewhere in Time. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a little bit of a return to that just a little bit. But uh, I don't know. I like the album a lot. And, it, and the more I listen to it, the more I like it. And, uh, you know, it's to me, it sits in line with some of the 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 best of the these years since Bruce has come back. So I dig two thumbs up for me. Excellent. Yeah. You know, Pete, I'm glad you said about that, accepting them for where they are right now. I think that that's a great point that I and I respect them for doing it really feels like they are doing what they want to do. Yeah. right now this oh, is yeah. truly the music that they want to make they're not trying to do some sort of uh you know let's try to sound like our quote classic era or anything like hello black sabbath 13 you know mm -hmm. this is really the type of this is where iron maiden wants to be and and i respect that about them mm -hmm. that that this, this they're doing what they they want to do and like you said accepting the fact that hey these guys they've grown they've changed this is who they are right now we can still love peace of mind and somewhere in time and i'm just glad that they're here doing what they want to do and still putting out albums you know yeah today. and you know what john if, if they would if they would have said all right you know screw it uh let's let's make you know half of our audience happy and let's let's purposely try and make number of the beast part two is it going to come off sounding forced? Exactly. Because how many people complained about Metallica on their last couple albums, oh, trying oh. way too hard to, to do albums that sound like Master of Puppets and Ride the Lightning all these years later, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's like a no-win situation. So yeah. you're just like, you know what? This is what we want to do now. And you're either along yeah. for the ride or you're not. And, you know, I know a lot of people who aren't. And they, oh, they yeah. all they want is, I want an album that sounds just like that you know like peace of mind it's like well that's that's not that's not gonna happen so i, yeah. I don't care I, I i like them doing what they're doing and as long as they're going to continue to do it i'll be buying them real quick i think that i think that iron maiden cemented that attitude when they played the entirety of a matter of life and death on their tour which i like i like that a lot and, well, i know a lot of people that never want to see him after that tour because of that <laughs> well, but, yeah, that's, so but that's what the john was saying like packed, they, dude. the shows are still packed so i guess those people I, didn't, are I didn't go to that one so i was i, was I, I, did it. I, go, but, but I, mean, I had no issue with that you know i for me i don't i don't want to see iron maiden tour after tour after tour play the same 15 songs no i just, I, I, I lose interest in well, that very quickly let's move over to mr aloe because he may have a little bit of a different opinion than the rest slightly, of slightly. slightly. And, um, 
yeah, I was going to say, I'm going to start with, yeah, I, listen, I love Iron Maiden. So oh. it's not that uh, my feelings towards Iron Maiden have changed. I've seen the band 40 something times in the Europe and, and, and the States. I've interviewed all six guys in the band multiple times, but I fucking hate this record. I fucking <laughs> hate it. It's disgusting. There, first off, the, let's let's address the elephant in the room here. Why is this album 82 fucking minutes across two discs? Let's let's say it like it is. The reason they have fucking stretched these songs to make two discs is exactly what the same the same thing that Nightwish and Black Sabbath and Judas Priest did. It's a double disc, so each disc sold counts as two. That's the only reason these fucking really? songs are this long. You guys, nobody sees that there's, it's 82 minutes. It's two minutes too long. You mean you couldn't trim it anywhere, <laughs> nowhere. You couldn't take out the ocean sounds. You couldn't take out one <laughs> guitar solo, one fucking intro, no. nothing. It's perfect <laughs> like it is. Bullshit. They are, uh -huh. they are inflating the sales. Number one. Number two, the songs are just fucking boring. Because they really just, need the money. It's they really just need completely money. boring. I mean, I started to make, make notes on the songs. By right. the time I got to Darkest Hour, I just wrote, I'm exhausted and I just don't care. <laughs> but guys, right. I'm sorry. I, I, oh, wish, I wish I could drink the Iron Maiden Kool-Aid, but I can't. I'm calling these guys out. I hate this fucking record. I listen. Steve told me he listened to it ten times. I'm like ten times. I listened to it four times. I don't know if I'll ever listen to it again. Listen, oh. every time Maiden comes out, I pay the money and I join the Iron Maiden fan club so sure. I can get the best possible seats and I go see Maiden on every tour three, four times. Amen. This time, I, I'm still gonna go, but I'm really gonna try and go only once because that's how much I, I hate this record and I hated the Final Frontier. But as much as I hated the final frontier, I love the title track. I really love that yeah. one song. I and I went like back and I'm song. like, you know what else? Uh, uh, the, the final frontier song, the first track, the yeah. opening track. You, I, you don't like a single song on Stratego. It's uh, very forgettable. Like I thought Stratego was okay. Yeah. I thought the title track was pretty good. You know, at first I hated writing on the wall, but Pete's right. It's kind of catchy. Oh, it's, you know, John mentioned it's kind of Southern Rocky. It's kind of folksy to me at times, yeah. but like when I listen to the whole thing and you know, this is somewhat of a comparison. I haven't heard a Halloween record in 30 something years. When I listen to that Halloween record, I'm like, holy shit, this sounds like Halloween. But when I listen to this new Iron Maiden, I'm like, what the fuck is this? This is not, this is not Iron Maiden. This is, this is Iron Maiden to me. This is them trying to go in a really strange new direction. And yeah, they, you guys are right. They've been heading that way. But I'm like, to me, this is the one where they they jump that shark, man. They mm -hmm. just they just took off. There are there is no fast aggressive music on this record at all. Everything is either slow or mid paced or mid paced a smidge. I mean, listen, there, there's 17 Maiden records. There's there's actually people, and I don't know if you guys know this, there's people now that are taking the new Maiden record and they're speeding it up and they're shortening it. Really? I'm like, wait, no, yeah, oh yeah, I've heard it. And honestly, John, it's better. Somebody sent me a version of this new Maiden record. It's like 59 really? minutes. I'm like, wow, you know what? <laughs> a lot better. That Everything's sounds like Halloween. You get more of that Maiden gallop. <laughs> And I, I just, I just, I can't stand it. And I, I mentioned this to Steve the other day, and I think it's great if you like, you go, yeah, Iron Maiden is settling in and they're, you know, they're sitting on their couches and they're comfy. And I, I, I have said it on Pete's show a million times. If you put a gun to my head and say Judas Priest or Iron Maiden, I would say pull the trigger. But this time I'm like Judas Priest all the way because firepower Kicks oh. the shit out of oh, this oh. record, and oh, I'm going to say it, and I've said it before, especially when it comes to the live set, Iron Maiden's fucking lazy because they've been touring, playing the old shit for years. They're barely even changing the sets. So to me, when I listen to this record, I just think, 
wow, they really want to slow down the pace and let's take it easy. And I don't know why, but to me, that's what this maiden record is. We are we are pulling the gears back. Uh, because if you look, look at the other records, I'm like, man, even the last couple ones, like you had songs like Wicker Man and uh, Rainmaker, like different worlds. There was still really good stuff that was still reminiscent of the old stuff. To me, when I listen to this, I'm like, who is this? I don't even know anymore. What's the wow. last time I made an album that you this love? This is the contrarian right here. Is your contrarian. The last one I loved. I really liked The Matter of Life and Death. Okay. Um, I thought that, you know, the first half I thought was great. They lost me a little on the second half, yeah. um, but I hated The Final Frontier. But you know what? I also, I really liked Book of Souls. Oh, wow. I okay. really enjoyed that. I mean, really? Tears of, I, I don't personally hear a lot different between Book of Souls and this album. I got to be honest. I think I like did them sound very comparable. Yeah. Really? Did you like Empire of the Clouds? Mm-hmm. That that was the really long song. Yeah, yeah, that's that one really I wasn't long. thrilled with. Oh, I see, I think that's the apex of the album. But to me, like, I okay, think. there's that. You know, you want you got one really long song. But to me, on, on the last record, Book of Souls had a lot of a lot of rockers. Man, you could still, mm. you know, you could still get into it. You could still there was that connective tissue. And to me, this is just maiden. You know, strolling down the stream on a canoe. You know, I, they I are just with Chris on this, and these are notes that I made. And there's nothing I love Book of Souls too. And I, I mean, part of this with Maiden too. If I go and see them perform these songs live, I may get a whole new feeling because I do that with a lot of bands. But there's nothing like Speed of Light on this album for me, or even if Eternity Should Fail. I just thought those absolutely were great, 100% great songs. Steve. And I'm not feeling it either, but I don't want to jump out of my turn so. No, well, that's it. I'm just, I'm just saying. I just, to me, I I don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, You know, what's your rating? Sure, if if everybody's okay with our rating, rating rating you're not. He's not getting any Christmas cards from Steve Harris. Yeah, (laughs) no, I I used to. I did. I used to get the maiden Christmas cards. I'm sure I'm off the list, mate. What's your rating, mate? What's your rating? Let's move on to Ryan. Three and a half, four. Ooh, that's a low blow. Low blow. It's getting low. Yeah. Bloody hell, mate. <laughs> you know, I would like to say, too, that maybe if I listen to it a whole bunch more times, but at 82 minutes, I'm like, Steve, listen to it 10 times. I'm like, Pete, 82 I'm minutes. I could watch now. like 10 fucking movies. Well, you know what like, you I, I, don't, I can't put that kind of time into this. You put your head down on your pillows tonight. Just put the earplugs in and put it on oh. while you sleep and you'll get subliminal messaging through it. There's so, so many so many of the melody, so many of the melodies that it's that slow and the angels, angels, angels. <laughs> I mean I could picture like the Iron Maiden guys just sitting around with beers and then Jones. <laughs> Or like, Butch Jones would fucking... say they're, they're they're dancing around the forest. That's what yeah, Butch would say. That's, yeah. <laughs> that, it sounds like German bur- German chance. beer drinking songs. So, so anyhow, yeah. so Chris Al, I think that that was a priceless review. I might not be real pleasant with mo- a lot of viewers. There's probably ones that are. Hey, listen, I still love me. I was just on Sirius off. XM. They asked me greatest metal band of all time. I said Black Sabbath, and they said, I don't know, maybe it's Iron Maiden. I go, yeah, yeah, Iron Maiden. Mm. This, you know, not counting this new record, but so what do you? I'm gonna give ask you one question before we move to Mr. Scow Nostradamus yeah. or Ooh. the new Iron Maiden. <laughs> all right, all right, that's a good point. Uh, Nostradamus is still a worse record than the new Iron Maiden. Right, I was just wondering because I you really yeah, you hope so because you said good. that's the worst album of all time, so. uh, yeah, and that's also a double <laughs> record, but yeah, Nostradamus that's a that's a zero out of ten. This is this is a, at least a four. <laughs> Nostradamus feels like it's three months along, too. All right, yeah, so Ryan, that's Scow, uh, we're let's let's it's getting long, so let's r- hop into your discussion and. And all right, Steve. Well, I've got a lot. No, I'll, I'll keep this brief. I'll uh, keep it to a couple uh, minutes and I'll do mine and we'll wrap this on up there. Uh, so much like Nick, like you said, uh, Iron Maiden is probably my favorite band of all time. I really like this album. Uh, I, I don't know. The last couple of years, I've kind of come into a different headspace with a lot of these older bands, and uh, I, I still want to be, I'm still critical of them. Uh, like I, I, I hated Final Frontier. The only song I actually had a whole album I liked was Where the Wild Wind Blows, I think was the last song. So it's uh, a whole album of just uh, and then the last song kind of picked me up. But uh, otherwise, I like you know all the albums since Bruce came back. Uh, Brave New World, 
which uh, so I'm a little younger than you guys. I was in high school when that came out, so I skipped school to go buy it. Oof. <laughs> I know. Yeah, a little, a little bit younger, Steve. But, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm just, I, I don't know, I'm just, like, very just appreciative to still have these bands in my life. Because, sure, like you said, sure. like you just said, you know, one day we're going to be looking back, and that's it. We got our last Iron Maiden album. We saw our last Iron Maiden show. Fuck knows it's already happened with, like, Motorhead, Dio, Black Sabbath. Million. So Typo negative, a million other bands. A million. So I'm, I'm just, I'm in that mind space now where the bands that still exist, the priests, you know, the maidens, you know, uh, and even the smaller bands like Satan and like a lot of those old new wave bands. I'm just real happy to have them around. So I don't want to say that colors my imp- impression too much when I get this stuff, but I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to say like, I'm going to force myself to like it because that's obviously bullshit. <laughs> But I, I definitely have that sense of uh this like, sounds just, like, like what you're doing though. It sounds like what you're no, doing. but it's like I, I I have a real sense of like just happiness, just the fact that there's a new album coming out. I could hopefully see them again. Because I don't know, to, to me, like being sour, now if you hate the album, you hate the album. To me, it's like I'm just happy it exists. I'm happy my favorite band's still putting out music that I okay. like. I'm happy to go see them. So uh, I picked this up and I figured it was good. Once I saw the song lengths, once I saw that the last three songs alone are longer than Rain and Blood. Just the last three songs. Ooh, I'm like, true. Ah, this true. is going to be like another Book of Souls. And I agree with Pete. I think it is a lot like Book of Souls. It doesn't have as many rockers. It is slower, but I don't know. That, like that, that doesn't bother me. I listen to a lot of slower metal. So that, that didn't really impact me in any way. And the fact that they don't sound like they did in the 80s, I don't know. I, I just don't even care about that. And all, you know, the longer songs and Janikers and blah, 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 everybody, you know, there's a million internet opinions on it. I don't really care about any of that. Uh, I don't know it's just it's just a, it's a good headphones album for me. I just put it on, I, I soak it in. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree, it's not progressive metal. It's definitely just long Iron Maiden songs. But it doesn't. Here's the thing for me: it doesn't feel long. I can put this album on, I can listen to it, mm-hmm. and it's, it's like it's just over, you know. And I have to. I've actually listened to it twice in a row sometimes. It just doesn't feel long at all, you know. Obviously, that that sells the parchment hell on earth. Those songs are 10 minutes, almost 13 uh-huh. minutes and 11 minutes each. That's that's a lot of music. And it just it feels like I put it on. I'm laying in bed at night, putting my headphones on before I go to sleep. It's like the album's over, you know, or. Because uh, you're still asleep. Thing. Yeah, well, no, no, I, I don't know. I, always <laughs> the out I can't fall asleep with music. <laughs> like I'll, that. That point. I'll, I'll take the headphones out. But uh, yeah, the first couple songs, like you said, Sinjutsu, which has like a, it's a weird opener. It's like this heavy, mm. almost like doom metal, you know, which is. Not typical for a band that used to open albums with like Invaders, Aces High, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Caught some more in time. Oh, yeah. Which is, you know, fancy shit. You're not getting uh, that then, Yeah, and even Stratego, which is like the classic song, I guess you said, has that gallop. I don't know. Like, I kind of agree. I, I like the song, but I kind of agree with Chris. It's it's not a fast song. It's like the gallop slowed down, which I'm fine yeah. with. I like that sound, but of course it's yeah, slowed it really down. doesn't have that, that classic maiden sound. But I'm not looking for that classic maiden sound because they did that sound. 30, 40 years ago, and they did it very well. And I don't need that sound again now, you know? I, I know what uh, John mentioned, the Black Sabbath 13 album, which I fucking hate, because to me that sounds oh, like they went in the studio, that. and they're like, here, guys, there's a lot of money to write Paranoid and Master Rally over again. I, I think Black Sabbath 13 is a good album, but I'm going to disagree. I, I like it too. I can't, I can't. It's, it sounds like... The new Metallica sound- ones all agree with Sound Force. The Black Sabbath, uh, I'm sorry. But, but I mean, this is proof. Everybody back does to have your, a back different thing. I want to wrap this up thing. But uh, so this, I don't know. This, this, this to me is a really good maiden album. When they came out and they did all of Matter of Life and Death Live, and all, like, ah, what are they doing? They, I just want to hear the Trooper twenty times in a row. I liked it, and I like that they played a lot of shit from Book of Souls in the last couple of tours. Uh, right. Came off really good live, uh, and then they cool. always do the alternating tour. Here's a tour of old songs. Here's a yep. tour of the new album. So I'm gonna I'm gonna be looking forward to hearing a lot of these songs live. The fact that a lot of them are kind of slower and longer, uh, I don't know. We'll see how it comes across live, but I have a good feeling about it, and mm-hmm. I'm just going to be fucking happy as shit to be in another Iron Maiden show. So excellent. Uh, I think it's going to go well. But yep, I'm going to give it a nine out of ten. And I really wow, a nine out of ten. Yeah. My God, Chris, that's way higher than yours. Better, better than Killers. Lot. Better than Number of the Beast. It's awesome. There was actually someone on the butcher shop saying that this album was better than Killers. Yeah, better yeah. than Somewhere. Better than Power Slave. And I said, man, I really got to listen to this album again on my walk today. And I didn't hear that. But uh, I don't hear it either. I'm going to get my two cents on this album. This this album for me is taking me a bitter time to warm up to. Even Pete said last night to listen to it more. And I have 
and it's starting to grow on me more, but it still does not grab me the first few listens. I'm really listen, f- trying to force myself to like it because I'm like Chris. I'm a huge Maiden supporter. I love, I want to see Book of Souls tour like three times. I saw Legacy of the Beast probably three times. I'm in the fan club. I got two of their pinball machines. I got their black light posters. I got their figurines from Super 7. And they're one of my favorite bands. But I just do not find this album entertaining that well right now. I mean, I love the Book of Souls. And I already mentioned, you know, they had a couple, they had some really songs that I really liked. I like Death and Glory, Speed of Light. And I absolutely love Eternity Should Fail. And I loved how that opened up that Book of Souls tour with Bruce up there. And, you know, maybe seeing some of these songs live will change my mind. My favorite track on a new one is Days of Future Past. Mm -hmm. Uh, Writing on the Wall has been growing on me. The title track and Stratego, both I've been listening to quite a bit. But I rate this next to Final Frontier, like the worst of these newer Maiden records, I'd say. And it's it was Final Frontier. I like the first couple songs a lot, and I couldn't when I first heard that album. I had a hard time listening to that for months, and I finally started to come around on Final Frontier later on. I did not see that tour, but uh, I'm gonna give this album like a six or a seven, maybe six five seven. I, you know, if you interview, if we talk about this a year from now, I might say more, but. Even now, I don't go back and listen to Matter Life of Death. I don't go listen to Dance of Death. I don't really listen to those albums when I listen to Maiden at all, these newer albums. Brave in the World is the one I like the most. And, uh, you know, I hope I start liking a little bit more. A live experience or help. Hopefully we'll get that soon as things start to straighten up with this. And that's my two cents on it. I'm not as bad as Chris. I had some other guys that were going to come on tonight that were like Chris with us. Let's do it once. Never need to listen to it again. I don't feel that way because as I put it on, I really enjoy listening to it, but I'm I'm just trying to like it more and really try to like it. But uh, and at one point I wanted to make about Halloween earlier. That was another band that I gave up on, just like Chris and a lot of the other guys. And when I was going to see Pumpkins United, I was looking at the set list and like listening to these songs that I never heard before. And I said, "Wow, I like that song. What album is this from?" And I kind of that that fall when I saw this tour. Uh, I was listening to a ton of Halloween because I I got this album. I got that album that I might have listened to or I got from Nuclear Blast as a promo. And uh, so that's our show for tonight. And I'm rambling on, but uh, I don't know if it's a great format. It it was a little bit long, but I thought it was interesting to get a few people together and talk about two new albums that we were all looking forward to have for a while. If you like this kind of content, let us know. Let us know if you like the new Iron Maiden. Let us know how much you enjoyed listening to Chris Allo, even if you disagree with him, because he was priceless tonight, I think. Steve, I'm going to tell you one thing, though. Do you think any of the albums after Seven Sun are as good as any up to the first seven albums? Because as much as I like the newer albums, I still think not, nothing they did post Seven Sun is as good as the first seven. I agree. And I, and I, I don't love, like I don't like the, anything as, as much as the first seven. No, I, I do not. I and, love the new albums, but to me, the first seven are like, it's like a religious little separate yeah. universe. Even like really. Fear of the Dark, I didn't really like that much. Of course, Fear of the Dark is a great song, and I'll never get tired of hearing that. But there's some, No Prayer for the Dying. I was really kind of done with by that, with Maiden. I didn't really like to listen to the Blaze Bailey stuff when it came out. Brave New World brought me back with them. I know I love Wicker Man. I love Blood Brothers. I love a lot of songs from that. I just hope this one keeps growing. It is growing more on me now. I didn't want to throw it under the bus like Chris Allo, but I definitely wanted somebody. Hey, I gave it a like four, it man. Because you have to have different commentary. It's yeah, like, Nostradamus is definitely a lot worse. Yeah, yeah Nostradamus is worse like Nostradamus this. better, it would have been really bad. Ooh. No, yeah. No, Iron Maiden. He said he liked Black better. Sabbath. Never say die better. I think I heard that on the phone. Oof, that's a tough. I take it. Well, listen, Never Say Die is like half half the amount of time. So even though I hate both of them, at least with Never Say Die, I'm done in like 38 minutes. So what do you guys all say? Should Chris Allo put this album on on his headphones before he goes to sleep tonight? And maybe he'll like it in the morning. <laughs> he part of said yes, do it. What do you say? Everyone votes. Yeah, Chris, I just wrap the quarter around my neck tonight. and just kill myself in my sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. My God. Well, anyhow, 
I'd like to thank everyone for their time tonight and uh, welcome back to the Rock Fantasy Files. We're going to try to keep doing some interesting shows as the fall goes on. Of course, with John McAtee and our regular guys in the death metal scene. I've been going out and taping all kinds of crazy stuff on the channel, too, that aren't music related. So I hope people don't hate me for that. But uh, thanks, everyone, for joining. And check out Sea of Tranquility. Check out The Lair of the Alchemist. And uh, John, what do you got going on there real quick? Let's tell, tell us. You got Just, you know, talking about rock and metal. <laughs> all right, good. All right, Pete, we'll see you soon. Sounds good. Thanks, guys.